love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Happy Sunday, everyone. And happy Easter as well as we celebrate uh, Divine Mercy Sunday. Today's second reading and gospel will be in Spanish. So I just want to tell you now so you can have the um, copies in front of you. And uh, the homily will be in uh, English today. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Savior of the world. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Those who were being saved. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Lectura de la Carta del Apóstol San Pedro Bendito sea Dios, Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, por su gran misericordia. Porque al resucitar a Jesucristo de entre los muertos, nos concedió renacer a la esperanza de una nueva vida que no puede corromperse ni mancharse y que Él nos tiene reservada como herencia en el cielo. Porque ustedes tienen fe en Dios, Él los protege con su poder para que alcancen la salvación que les tiene preparada y que Él revelará al final de los tiempos. Por esta razón, alégrense, aun cuando ahora tengan que sufrir un poco por adversidades a fin de que su fe sometida a la prueba sea hallada digna de alabanza, gloria y honor el día de la manifestación de Cristo. Porque la fe de ustedes es más preciosa que el oro y el oro se acrisola por el fuego. A Cristo Jesús ustedes no lo han visto y sin embargo lo aman al creer en Él ahora sin verlo. Se llenan de una alegría radiante e indescriptible, seguro de alcanzar la salvación de sus almas que es la meta de nuestra fe. Palabra de Dios.
Lectura del Santo Evangelio según San Juan. Gloria a ti, Señor. Al anochecer del día de la resurrección, estando cerradas las puertas de la casa donde se hallaban los discípulos, por miedo a los judíos, se presentó Jesús en medio de ellos y les dijo, La paz esté con ustedes. Dicho esto, les mostró las manos y el costado. Cuando los discípulos vieron al Señor, se llenaron de alegría. De nuevo les dijo Jesús, la paz esté con ustedes. Como el Padre me ha enviado, así también los envió yo. Después de decir esto, sopló sobre ellos y les dijo, Reciban el Espíritu Santo. A los que les perdonen los pecados, les quedarán perdonados, y a los que no se les los perdonen, les quedarán sin perdonar. Tomás, uno de los doce, a quien llamaban el gemelo, no estaba con ellos cuando vino Jesús, y los otros discípulos le decían, Hemos visto al Señor, pero él les contestó, Si no veo en sus manos la señal de los clavos, y si no meto mi dedo en los ah, agujeros de los clavos, y no meto mi mano en su castado, no creeré. Ocho días después estaban reunidos los discípulos a puerta cerrada, y Tomás estaba con ellos. Jesús se presentó de nuevo en medio de ellos y les dijo, La paz esté con ustedes. Luego le dijo a Tomás, Aquí están mis manos, acerca tu dedo. Trae a Cuba tu mano, métela en mi costado, y no sigas dudando si no crees. Tomás le respondió, Señor mío y Dios mío, Jesús, an, Jesús añadió, tú crees porque me has visto. Dichosos los que creen sin haber visto. Otras muchas señales milagrosas hizo Jesús en presencia de sus discípulos, pero no están escritas en este libro. Se escrib es escribieron estas para que ustedes crean que Jesús es el Mesías, el Hijo de Dios, y para que creyendo, Tengan vida en su nombre. Palabra del Señor. Gloria a Dios. Today's gospel reading that we just heard in Spanish is a very popular reading. And we read this gospel every Sunday after Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. And it starts off by saying that the disciples were in a locked room out of fear. Out of fear. And Jesus came to them with his peace. And he says, peace be with you. And then Jesus leaves, and then he comes back again. This time Thomas was with him. And we all know how the story goes about, how it ends. Thomas becomes a believer. And then Jesus says, what I have done, I want you to do also. So he's telling them to go out into the world beyond the locked doors. And he gives, him, gives them his peace. 
It's interesting because this gospel is parallel, it's congruent with how we're living today. You know, most of us are living behind locked doors out of fear. But Jesus comes to us also with his peace. And he's saying to us, peace be with you. That although you may be in fear, accept my peace. Accept my compassion for what you're going through. You know, when we're locked in, it does something to us. It, it prohibits us from being the person that God wants us to be. We're isolated from people, from events, experiences, and we're behind closed doors thinking all these things that we normally wouldn't think about. We have doubts, we have fears, we have anxiety. And maybe to some people, it's, it's a positive thing. I've heard people say, you know, spending more time with my spouse is a wonderful thing. I've heard others say that, you know, when you live this close with someone, you begin to know their, their uh, shortcomings. You begin to see their faults. But we're called to go beyond that. We're called to live with peace. So is there peace in our families? Are we able to call our family members, to FaceTime them? Do we see peace in our community when we go out for a walk? Jesus came to give us peace. When we got up this morning, were we able to experience the peace that he gives us? Jesus' peace clears away a lot of things. I was talking to a uh, business associate, um, an elderly person, and we were just sharing the challenges that we have in business and also some of the challenges that, that we have not being able to go out in the public. And he expressed to me that one of the biggest challenges that he and his wife had was the fear of death. And he said that he started thinking about all these things that he wouldn't even think about before. Guilt, punishment, what happens after death. And I'm thinking, you know, the people who are very strong Christians, why did those people kind of go and think in that direction? Because it's all about God's peace. It's about his mercy, and it's about his forgiveness. And Jesus came to be the face of God, to show us peace, mercy, and forgiveness. And that's what we celebrate today with Divine Mercy Sunday. You know, Jesus came with peace, but a lot of people didn't accept that peace. There were people who didn't believe. And Thomas was one of them. But Thomas came to believe because of the support that he had with his fellow brothers. So today we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. And it was a Sunday that was started by St. John Paul the Great. Almost to this day, six years ago, he was canonized. And he started Divine Mercy Sunday exactly 20 years ago, in the year 2000. And if you look at his life, his life was led with the understanding of God's mercy, God's love, God's forgiveness, and God's compassion. And because of that, he wanted to transform that understanding to us. And what this Sunday is saying is that in the scriptures and in the life of Jesus, we have God's divine mercy, his love, and his forgiveness. I was reading a while ago something about the life of John Paul the Great. 
as someone was trying to put into words or put into action what God's divine mercy is all about. So they created this analogy. They said, just think of yourself, maybe your right hand having some deformity, so much that there's a wild stench in it. And you walk to the ocean. You bend down and you put your hand in the wave. And you take it out. And the stench is gone, the deformity is gone, and your hand is pure. Now that's God's love and mercy. That deformed hand and that stench is our sins. They're the sins of the entire world. But God can wash those away in an instant. And today we are called to understand his love and his mercy. In the love that he brings to this community, to the world. So as we continue on our celebration, once again, we're reminded of how great God's love is for us. So much that he gave us his son as an example. That through the example of Jesus, you and I have a new life. And we have resurrected life to look forward to. And the cause of death, the cause of guilt, the cause of forgiveness should not be a part of our lives. Because God does forgive us. And God is waiting on pins and needles for us to come back to him. Because we are created in his likeness and his image. And God's love, mercy, and compassion surpasses any locked door that can hold us. It wipes away our fear. It wipes away any thought that we have that pulls us against the human family. It provides the foundation of what we can be as people and the future that we have as a church. Bishop Parks, priests and deacons of our diocese, for responding to the needs of others with the mercy and compassion of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all those working to end the coronavirus pandemic, for those caring for the sick, developing treatments, or researching vaccines, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are frightened and isolated due to the pandemic. For the risen Christ to calm their fears and lead them from darkness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those without faith, for those who do not believe, for those who doubt, for accepting Jesus by our words and actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish volunteers, especially the St. Vincent de Paul and Food Pantry volunteers, who are working selflessly to help the poor and the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Anne Parish community, for being instruments of mercy through our everyday actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, especially those with the coronavirus. For the risen Lord to bring an end to the pandemic. And for those who have asked us to pray for them, especially for Nicholas Milano and Richard Daniel. For God's love, peace, and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially for Father Brendan Smythe, Mary Ann Rodriguez, Howard Edwards, Sylvia Magdalena Galuski, Father Ed Grimes, and James Coulihan. For God's gift of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Anna Mama Curian, for whom this Mass is offered, and for our personal intentions. For all these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God and giver of all life, you gift us with your divine mercy and consolation. Continue to bless us on our journey and raise us up to the new and eternal life given to us by your Son, Jesus. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Powers with the angelic hosts, 
Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Mystery of Faith. with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Anne and all the saints, on whose constant intercession of your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the Spaniard, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing in this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever.
protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just want to take a moment to thank a few people that are here day in and day out to make this mass, uh, masses uh, live streaming possible for you. Linda, of course, is the word that's the head of everything, and she does a wonderful job of uh, editing and filming, and of course our readers, uh, Marge and, uh, and uh, Anna, uh, we appreciate you being here, and uh, Deacon, we very much appreciate the homily, thank you very much, Dale, but, uh, you know, you notice that we have our, our, our the man playing the organ here, Wayne, has recently been ordained a bishop, that's why he's in purple, so be sure to call him Bishop Wayne for now. But anyway, thank you everyone for, for all that you do. I hope that you guys are hanging in there and that you have a good Divine Mercy Sunday. And be sure, obviously, to join us uh, from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, here at the church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.